artist is lying on some kind of white couch outdoors with autumn leaves on the pavement and he's wearing pink shorts and socks and he's holding a bunch of bright colored balloons that float above him looking at you and it seems to you he's telling a story the story of a man born in Germany in the 60s who kind of conquered the world with his bold and visionary pictures it's a self portrait shot in Paris 2017 by a photographer whose name ironically is Teller Jürgen Teller Hi Jürgen hello what do you make of your name Teller <laughs> when i was a child i always had a problem with it because uh, my pupils in the school you know they always teased me and there's a, there's a saying in germany Because teller means plate in English, and uh, there's a saying like uh, a suppen teller, which is like a, a, a plate of soup. And I was always uh, slightly embarrassed about the name. And when I came to England in in, in '86, it, it's kind of kind of changed. You know, it suddenly it, it 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 sounded quite good. You know, my name, and then I just realized, you know, mm, teller. You know, it's like a story teller, and. Uh, You know, that's what I do in, 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 in a funny kind of way. I kind of uh, either write stories or, or, or you know, mostly uh, I, I tell, tell stories in my, in my photographs, in my series of photographs. What kind of story do you feel you're telling us through your photographs, through your career, through this incredible journey? Different stories, you know, it's, 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 it's just simply my, my interest And it, and, it, and it could vary, you know. Like it's, it's just to be curious in life, and 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 sometimes some, something catches my my inspiration and and my my curiosity, and I go with it, you know. Whether whether it's a a cookbook I'm doing, or a journey with my wife, or or, or my children, or or, or what, what it could be anything really. I did a project which I was. It took me a very very long time to photograph the forest I grew up in. And, uh, and, it, and it means a lot to me, the, the, the forest, because I literally come from this uh, tiny village and, it's, and, it's, and our house is next to the forest and uh, I was never able to capture it. And then I kind of have a way to photograph it, it, it very normally and it, and it became really beautiful and my mother uh, started to be curious about it. It's like I, I get up at 4.30 in the morning in the summer when the sun comes up and she says, why are you always going to the forest? You know, And I said, I'm... Oh, trying to photograph the, the forest through the four seasons and different times. And, and, uh, and, uh, and she said, oh, I, I want to come along with. And through that, it be, uh, we had conversations in the forest and, 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 and I wrote a story about it. And it's like that. It could be, could be anything, really. Would you say there's a lot of you all the time in all your photographs? Yes, I think it, it's, it, that defines a good... Photographer, you know, there's, there is, is always a kind of a self-portrait. I think a good photograph is, is like when you always feel the complete intent of the photographer. So somehow it's always in there. I like the fact that you document your roots also, where you come from, Jürgen. Yeah. Where do you come from? Where do I come from? It's a, it's a geographical place uh, uh, near Nuremberg. And uh, I used to be a bow maker. For, 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 for violins and, and double bass and cellos. And I started, and, and, and there's an apprenticeship for three years, and I started to have, a, have a, a, a asthma attacks. So I had to leave that. And I became interested in photography and uh, studied photography in Munich for two years. And uh, because I'm coming from the small place and because I wanted to be but similar to my, what my father was doing, they're doing bridges for the violins. And, and this village where I come from, they're, they're either guitar makers or violin makers. It's a concentrated place of making musical instruments. And I had problems in school. It, it never, I, I was never good with authority. And, um, and I'm slightly dyslexic. And when I, when I discovered photography and, and the way of seeing and I kind of wanted to travel and I wanted to explore the world and I still thought and then also I didn't want to go to the army 
And I thought if I do this, I kind of lose all this uh, drive and enthusiasm of uh, being hungry of, 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 of taking photographs, exploring things and everything. And I, and I would lose that. So I kind of like packed my bags and uh, ha drove my car to, to, to London. And I couldn't speak any English. And I kind of slept in the, in, in, in the car uh, at the beginning. And it was a really, really hard time. And it cost me so much energy to struggle, to learn the language, to make a living as a photographer there, that you kind of like leave your roots and, and leave everything behind. So everything was more focused on this newness of this new, new cuisine, new culture, uh, learning English. So I was like, until, until, till, till years after, I suddenly thought, well, I'm kind of homesick. You know, uh, there's a beautiful German expression called Heimweh, and, uh, which means homesick. And uh, of course, during these years and times, I did go back to, my, to, to visit my parents and everything like that. But when I was c coming home, you know, I felt like I looked at things in a completely fresh way. And I thought, oh my God, you know, this is where I come from. And, and, and I started to uh, explore it photographically. Would you say photography has to do with craftsmanship? No. No, it used to be. You know, I used to, I used to, you know, I, I, was, I was studying and, and the only camera we were allowed to use was a large format camera with a, with a plate, you know, a plate goes down and, and you go under the, under the black towel and you see everything upside down and, and, and it was super technical. And you learn how to develop uh, the film and, and process it and, uh, and I learned how to, how to print in, in, in black and white and then later on in color. So this, this was, of course, very profound learning about photography and, and about composition and about things like that, you know? But I felt more at ease without all this blah, blah, blah equipment around it, you know? So after a couple of years, I, 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 I was very, felt very at home with less equipment and with a 35 millimeter camera and the kind of a shape of a 35 millimeter frame suited my way of looking. I'm wondering, what's the most intimate, the most personal picture you've ever taken? Probably the show I'm having tonight. And it's called The Myth. And, uh, and, I, and I've done it uh, with a, with, together with my wife, Deville, uh, as a collaboration. And uh, Deville and me, we got married in, 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 in 2021. And uh, last year we wanted to get pregnant. You know, there's this myth, if you, if you put your legs up, if the woman, if you puts the legs up, it helps to get pregnant. And we were in, in, this, in this hotel and, and, and I looked and I thought, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And then I had this idea, oh my God, you know, what about asking the hotel manager to go into every single hotel room and, and we, we, we do this. That series, I think it's the most romantic series uh, I've, I've ever done. It seems to me that through your pictures we get something of the tragedy, of the comedy, of the frailty, of the absurdity of life and of the world too. Yes, because it's, it's, uh, you live it, you know, you live in the world and, and, and it's not all just sunshine. And sometimes it rains and sometimes it thunders, you know, and uh, I'm interested in, in, in the variety of things, you know. I don't, I don't just eat pasta every day, you know. I Need to Live, uh, that's the name of this huge exhibition at the Grand Palais Ephemer in Paris that was curated by Thomas Vesky, made possible thanks to La Réunion des Musées Nationaux, La Maison Saint Laurent and Anthony Vaccarello. What does it mean to you, I Need to Live? <clears throat> well, we thought of we thought for a long time about the title of the show, and I've been contextualizing and reworking some of my work for 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 years now, whether in in in, in exhibitions and in, in 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 books, having new projects and new works, and recontextualizing it with older works. So so the the, the past is always with the present. Uh, kind of thing, and as I'm in a, as I'm in a stage now where where I'm extremely happily married, 
and and we have our daughter, and I have two other children, Lola and Ed. Uh, it was such a heavy impact in, in, in one's life, in my life, in my mother's life, uh, what my father did, killing himself, that it left a, left a huge mark. And, and I need to live, basically. I chose not this direction, I chose this direction. I need to live for myself, I need to live, I, wanna, I want to live for my children, I need to live for my wife. I am so curious about doing more work and, 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 and being in the world, you know, I need to live. So I, f I feel like it's a very forceful, it's a very positive, it's a very good, good title. And how is this urge to live present in your photographs? Because you f I, I hope, <laughs> I hope you, fe you feel the energy through my eyes, through my soul, through my body, through my work. You know, that, that, that uh, I really feel something when I photograph Agnes Varda, you know, there's a, or this kind of uh, adventure you have together when you, when you photograph someone. You do something together, and I, and I like that, and I like to collaborate. You know, I did a project with uh, Cindy Sherman together, and with uh, uh, numerous exhibitions with, with uh, Boris Mikhailov or with uh, Araki, and, uh, and, it, and it's super exciting, and it's, and it's energy giving and, and yeah. And how do you find this energy, this connection? What do you tell them? I don't know, it's, it's like um, I have the ability to psychologically assess a person very fast. And you have to be very sensitive and careful of what to, how to do things, when to ask what, and when not to ask or whatever, whatever it is. And, and you have to react extremely fast in certain situations of, of, of where you think it's good to go or not to go. Do you fail sometimes? In unimportant things, I do. But in the important things, I don't. And, and it's not about failing or not. You know, it's like, uh, it's good to make mistakes and, and it's good to play. Even if I take everything extremely serious and I work extremely hard on everything, whether it's a commercial job or, or for my own, I don't stop if I'm not satisfied. And you work as long as, as it takes to do it. But do you know it immediately when you have the good picture? Yes, of course. I feel it, and I know it. You know, it's about the combination of, of, of your instinct and your intellect to, to, to know what it is, and it's an extraordinary happy feeling. I asked you about your most personal photograph, and you talked about love, and I'm wondering how hard is it to, um, to make a family portrait? It's very difficult. It's very difficult because it took me a long time to photograph my mother and it took me a very long time to photograph my wife. Even when you think, oh, oh, she looks pretty here, whatever, blah, 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 and you take a photograph, it's, it's still uh, hindered me because it means too much for me. I had to really think about, and it's not about just one photograph or something, you know, it's, it's about a, more than that, it's about a, about a project, it's about a, about a portfolio you want to do, like a book you want to do. Do you need to like or to love someone when you photograph him or her? No. No, it used to be, when I was younger, I used to be that, that I respected that person, I admired that person, or I liked that person, or I felt attractive to that person, all of these kind of things. And, uh, and I think my first conceptual project I did was, uh, was when I did Gosis. I asked uh, over a period of one year to, to ask models to come at my door and, and I photographed them. And that really helped me a hell of a lot to really photograph very seriously with the same intent to do a good photograph, a good portrait of each single person. And the book is 480 pages thick. And, and it was a really extremely good learning process for me. And afterwards I thought, I can photograph anything now, anybody, anything. Do you often say no? Uh, yes, of course. How hard is it to say no? Uh, it's uh, quite, quite often very easy and sometimes 
uh, in terms of time constraint or, or something what you really want to do, but you can't because you're doing something else already. But I think this is this is this is a big part of our job, uh, considering what might be good for you for you and for them. You know, and I like to work with with people over over a period of time. And uh, with Mark Jacobs, I have, I worked for 17 years continuously. And with Anthony, I <clears throat> I worked since we since we met and since we started working together, and we we continue working together. And uh, and 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 I like that because you learn something each time, and you know each other more and more better, and you can push each other more and more. Uh, to, to achieve something and not just having a client and you don't care uh, and you have a next one and next one and the next one. It's, I, I like relationships. I'd like to focus on one photograph that will be the exhibition poster for I Need to Live at the Grand Palais Ephemere, that self-portrait with pink shorts and balloons. What do you like about it? Why did you choose it to encapsulate the show? Well, we've thought about it also uh, Obviously, <laughs> what what kind of image it should be, and it became very clear because of, because also of the title of the show. I need to live. It had to be me. I I, I wanted to be a self portrait, and uh, I I just I just feel it's a beautiful photograph, and it has life in it, and it and it has the the autumn leaves in it, which suggests the passing of time and the, the organicness and and holding these colorful balloons is the life you know it's like this different one is green one is pink one is blue and it suggests different scenarios of life and i'm and i'm holding it and i'm I, and i'm in control of my life i'm i'm controlling it the original photograph actually is in, it will be in the show, and I'm naked in it. So obviously I couldn't use it for the poster. So we retouched the pink shorts in it, actually. <laughs> this is actually the first and only time when I ever retouched my own photographs. <laughs> Thank you, Jürgen. 